Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Salam satu Malaysia. And a very good morning and a very warm welcome to all participants and of course women from all over the country and the region. Ya Ahmad Rahmat, Datuk Seri, Dr. Ahmad Zahid, Deputy Prime Minister of Malaysia, Datuk Seri Sharizat Jalil, Wanita BN Chief, and not forgetting her husband too, President of the Senate, Honourable Ministers, Deputy Ministers, and that includes, of course, Ministers from the region who are here, Head of ASEAN Delegation, our esteemed speakers, distinguished delegates, ladies and gentlemen. It is a great pleasure to be here today among so many of our friends from across the region. And as Chair of ASEAN, I bid you a very warm welcome. Thank you for joining us here in Kuala Lumpur. My wife and I are truly delighted to be here. And as the saying goes, one of the criteria for a successful gathering when there is only standing room. And I think this morning's event is indicative of the strong response and support from all the women around the region. Thank you very much for being with us. And I would also like to make a particular mention to welcome our ladies, our Wanita Barisa National and Wanita Amno. Terima kasih kerana datang untuk hadir bersama-sama di majlis ini menjadikan himpunan kita ini Terasnya warna merah dan putih. Ladies and gentlemen, there's been considerable discussion about women's role in politics in recent months. While in New York for the United Nations General Assembly last month, I spoke at a global leaders meeting on the subject of gender equality and women's empowerment. I must have said the right things because I received a few applauses. This meeting marked the first time that commitments to women and girls had been made at the head of government level at the United Nations and I was delighted to have been part of it. However, the truth is that there is still a long way to go and there are far too many women in our region and indeed across the world that are currently disenfranchised from politics. But we have reasons to be optimistic. We live in a time of enormous change and opportunity as well. The theme of this conference, promoting representation through connectivity and innovation, is symbolic of the transformation that are leading to greater connectivity across the region and of the advances in technology that few of us would have thought possible even a few years ago. In Malaysia, we are attempting to lead this change. 
Recently, we established a Women's Advisory and Consultative Council with the aim of providing a boost to our efforts in formulating policies and legislations specific to women. The Council will act as a think tank, think tank monitoring and appraising the efficiency and effectiveness of government policies and programs related to women and will play an important part in line with our national policy on women and the plan of action for advancement of women. These initiatives follow the inclusion of upholding the role of women as one of the main strategies in our last budget, which outlined plans to improve access to the job market for all women. Under our most recent economic blueprint, the 11 Malaysia Plan, we outline our plans to increase female labour participation from 54% to 59%. And we have launched a number of initiatives. For example, our Ministry of Women, Family and Community Development, together with Talent Corporation Malaysia, launched a career comeback program which is intended to increase the number of talented women returning to the workforce. This May, we established the Malaysian chapter of the 30% Club to help achieve our goal of women in order that women will make up at least 30% of managerial and decision-making posts in the public and private sectors by 2016. In this regard, we have launched a new initiative through our Securities Commission compelling all companies to declare in their annual report Gender Diversity Index. Next year, we will know each and every company, the composition of women amongst their board members, managerial and employees. And I think when you can measure success and otherwise, that is moving in the right direction. I would also like to mention that we've been more successful in the public sector, 33% of those in the higher echelon in the civil service are actually women. And this is a good achievement. In the coming weeks, we are going to launch a national action to empower single mothers, recognizing that single mothers and female-headed households are often socially and economically disadvantaged particularly in rural areas. And this is an issue that has to be addressed at the highest level. Malaysia has a proud tradition of giving rise to strong and successful women. It is this tradition that we hope to strengthen for the future, increasing the number of empowered female leaders we have in our midst today and ensuring that all women across the region have the same opportunities to succeed tomorrow. Ladies and gentlemen, we cannot deny that we have a long way to go. Take politics and governance, for instance. In 2014, only 18% of the total number of parliamentarians in Asia and only 17% of government ministers were women. With over 2 billion women in Asia today, that simply isn't good enough. How can we call ourselves representative democracies if half of our population are not adequately represented in our legislative houses? There are some who continue to see politics as an arena solely for men, 
This was confirmed in a study by the Harvard Business School examining perceptions of women leaders which revealed that a majority of people believe women to be out of place in politics. Let me be very clear, they are wrong. Women have an equal, indeed, a crucial role to play in matters of politics, governance, and leadership. And I am the first to admit that for every election that we have won in Malaysia, women have played a pivotal role. Not far from us in South Asia, we have we've seen practically every country in that region led by strong, decisive women at some point of time in their recent histories. Indira Gandhi in India, Benazir Bhutto in Pakistan, although I'm told that I have to say it differently, Bhutto in Hasina Bagun in Bangladesh, and so forth. We have, of course, had female leaders lead some of our countries in the past, such as Indonesia and Philippines. But who is to say that we cannot achieve the same across all of ASEAN? Talking about this isn't enough. What we need to focus on is how we can effectively and permanently address this disparity. What can we do to ensure that women leaders are able to thrive in politics and make it to leadership positions? The change, some would say, starts at home. In a study by Oxford University, it was found that women are still responsible for the majority of child tasks in families when both adults are working, women are roughly six times more likely than men to bear responsibility for the majority of household tasks, and they're about ten times more likely to be a primary child care provider. The sacred role of women aside, does that seem fair to you? It doesn't to me. If we are serious about having more equal representation for women in our legislatures, indeed. Indeed, if we are serious about having a female Prime Minister of Malaysia one day, then the change must start in the home with every father, husband and every son. Let me say that this is something that's important for us to pursue. And um, you know the saying that behind every successful man lies a woman. It's a cliche. So if you extend that logic, the more successful you want to be, the more women must be behind you. So, I mean, I want to explain that it's in a political sense. Otherwise, I will get into a lot of trouble with my wife. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we must challenge and overcome the social conventions that say a woman's role is only in the household, that it's only a woman's responsibility to take care of her home. Both genders, men and women, must understand that these are shared responsibilities and men must share in them. Only then, having changed this mindset, can women go beyond and become true equals in the workplace. Ladies and gentlemen, in an era where connectivity can result from the simple possession of a smartphone and the downloading an app, the linkages between information and innovation have never been more promising. It is increasingly evident that we are living through a data revolution where people, irrespective of their geographical location, are tied to the rest of the global community. In Malaysia, we recognize 
the enormous opportunities this presents, and indeed, we're looking to leverage these developments in innovation and technology to help graph, drive us forward as we draw ever closer towards our objective of reaching high income nation status by 2020. As Chair of ASEAN, Malaysia strives to foster platforms of innovation with the Malaysian Global Innovation and Creativity Center, MAGIC, and Agency Innovasi Malaysia AIM, being just two examples of organizations we have established in this space. MAGIC, which was launched in 2014 by President Barack Obama and myself, is led by Cheryl Liu, a dynamic female leader, aims to foster a collaborative and supportive ecosystem of aspiring innovators. Since the launch, Magic Academy has run over 80 workshops, trained 13,000, almost 14,000 entrepreneurs across all sectors. AIM was established with the objective of ensuring innovation was embedded in the national psyche. I think it's important for us to establish more and more platforms so that when we tell people to innovate, they know how to do it. Many people, when you say innovate, they turn around and say, how do we do it? So the more platforms you have, the better access to innovation which will take place in our communities. Ladies and gentlemen, the emphasis on education, we cannot achieve innovation without education. We cannot empower women without education. And that is why Malaysia allocates 7.7% of its budget spending to higher education, 21% for education as a whole, a higher proportion than compared to many countries. And this has produced tangible results. Over the past decade, higher education enrollment in Malaysia have grown by 70% to include 1.2 million students today. In 2010, Compared to 1990, six times as many students were enrolled in bachelor degrees and ten times as many enrolled in postgraduate degrees. Looking ahead, the Malaysian Blueprint, Education Blueprint has set new targets for 2025, improving tertiary enrollment rates from 36% currently to 53% and higher education enrollment from 48% to 70%, increasing the current 75% graduate employability to more than 80% in 2025, ensuring we have at least one university in Asia's top 25, two in the global top 100, and four in the global top 200. The blueprint calls for an entrepreneurial mindset among students and institutions, one that produces graduates with a drive to create jobs rather than simply seek jobs. And making sure that the very high rate of enrollment of students at public universities in Malaysia, almost 70% are women in our public universities. That, that large proportion of women will in fact play a crucial role in achieving our long-term goals. Turning to connectivity, I don't want to talk too much about this because the subsequent speakers will touch on this, but I'm impressed that as Digital migrants, let us see, Sharizat mentioned about native digital. 
but people like us are digital migrants because we move from the analog era to the digital era. But I'm amazed with how many of us have made this transition to become quite tech savvy. And I know amongst Wanita Amno and especially Dr. Sri Sharizad, she is very, very active in social media. And I keep track, I keep track of all the women's activities because she sends me MMS on a fairly regular basis. So, Wanita Amno, I know what you get up to, even though I'm not there. But I have to say that she also lightens up my life by sending me some jokes now and then, but unfortunately, they're not the ones that I can relate to the public. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, while this conference aims to create a political network for us and women involved in politics, and by extension, encourage greater participation of women in decision-making positions in the electoral process, I hope this is the beginning of something exciting, a growing trend of cooperation sharing amongst the ASEAN nations today. And don't forget, we've chosen the theme for this year, People Connected ASEAN, People Centered ASEAN. And when you talk about People Centered ASEAN, then the importance of women to achieve that goal becomes more and more evident. We must encourage and support the exchange of ideas across borders and then create an environment where ideas can be implemented. Let us learn from one another and doing so strengthen ourselves and each other. It is in light of this that I look forward to establishing a secretariat for women in politics in Kuala Lumpur to ensure that this Dialogue and cooperation will continue. I'm not sure whether we should host every year, but we can at least do it once every two or three years. And in between, encourage our fellow ASEAN countries to host the same event and give us opportunity for the and women to travel to the other ASEAN countries as well. Ladies and gentlemen, an increase in the number of female leaders in ASEAN can only bring more solutions and valid perspective to our decision-making process. Looking forward, we must create a level playing field where women have the same opportunities to succeed as their male, as their male counterparts. I believe my daughter or our daughters should have the same opportunities I was granted or that we were granted and indeed that my son or our son was granted. It is only when she and all of our daughters have the same opportunities that I will rest easy. Remember, when women succeed, we all succeed. Thank you. Component and friends of Barisan National and the committee members of Women in Politics for the Lumpur. Head of the delegates from member states, please make your way onto the stage for the official launch of WIPKL 2015. I'd like to invite the members of the media to approach the stage for this very special moment. is the official launch of WIP KL 2015 that will be raised by the Honourable Prime Minister. And joining the stage still, there are some members. Ladies and gentlemen, 
We direct your attention to the screen. Ladies and gentlemen, ASEAN Women in Politics, Volume Report 2015.